this is Joseph Mendoz with another video for virtualsheetmusic.com. Um, today I'd like to talk about a, um, well, something that I talked about a little bit already uh, in a previous video on um, how to make a, a, a wonderful, beautiful tone or something like that. I can't remember what the title is. Uh, anyway, so this is just another little video about sound production um, and, and going into detail about um, another aspect of how to produce uh, a really wonderful sound. Now there's some, um, well, I don't know if there's some misconceptions, but there's, there's occasionally some lack of clarity on actually what's going on when we are uh, producing a sound. Um, uh, so the bow, uh, as most of you know, or it's, unless you're using synthetic hair, uh, which some bows have, um, uh, the bow has, uh, uses uh, horse hair, has horse hair on it. And then horse hair has little tiny ridges, and in those ridges, uh, these are microscopic, in those ridges, um, that's where the rosin collects. Now when you draw your bow across the strings and make a sound, what's happening is is that those ridges are catching the string and they keep catching and releasing, catching and releasing. Almost as if you're plucking a lot of times in a row. Those little ridges are, are continuously plucking that string. And that's why we hear continuous sound. Um, so that um, uh, with that in mind, we have to think, okay, is the best way to make a sound uh, by pressing or by more of a pulling feeling? Now, all we have to do is think about pizzicato, go back to pizzicato and think, okay, when I, uh, when I pluck a string, what I'm normally doing is I'm pulling it to the side and maybe slightly up depending upon your, your pizzicato technique. Um, but I pluck more to the side like that. So if that's how I'm going to make a sound with pizzicato, that's actually how I want to make a sound with the bow as well. I want to have a, a clear sensation with the bow that I am pulling the sound and then on the up bow, I'm doing the same. Now one little exercise that I like to do with some of my students, um, well with all my students, um, is uh, to, to kind of get this feeling, is that if you actually hold on to your bow at, at, at some point and kind of pull in the opposite direction and see what your fingers do, see how your fingers respond. If your fingers are able to respond, first of all, you have a good bow hold. That means that you're, you're pronated and you're, you know, and you're doing all the things we talked about in, in the bow hold video there. Um, but it also means that, uh, well, it helps you to get this feeling of, of pulling. So you'll want to have this feeling of resistance at all times when you're playing. Uh, if you don't have that feeling, it, it actually makes playing the cello quite difficult. Uh, so you want to try to develop and cultivate that feeling of, of resistance. Uh, so that's what I mean by pulling. You can think of yourself in a, in a little game of tug of war against the string. Um, you know, you always want to feel that, that feeling of pulling. Now this will have lots of beneficial effects on your playing. It'll even have a beneficial effect on your right hand in terms of how well organized your right hand is and, and your, your feeling of contact with the string and everything. Um, uh, it will help that tremendously. Um, so um, another aspect of this polling, uh, sorry, and uh, something I forgot to say, this uh, um, polling this way, you can also do it this way. If you hold on to the to the uh, back of the bow here, you can kind of pull and, and see what that up bow uh, feeling is going to feel like. Because the up bow has a kind of a pulling feeling too. Now, so so you can imagine that if we if we press the sound too much, of course we get a scratch. But with modern string technology, um, it actually allows you to press a certain amount without the the string. Um, uh, without without the string buckling on you, you know, like like that, right? Um, and and this is you know um, uh, largely on the cello because on the cello we have we're using a lot of metalcore strings these days, uh, which are fine and, and make some beautiful sounds, um, uh, but they allow you to get away with a certain amount um, uh, that's not immediately obvious. For example, playing on a gut string. Um, or some lower tension string, it will be immediately obvious when you press too hard because that sound will crack on you quite easily. And that's partially what makes those strings uh, di more difficult to play on. However, the benefit of those lower tension strings is that they really prevent you from doing any sort of pressing at all. 
So not only does that aid in, in the general beauty of your sound, but it also, I think, is an aid in phrasing. Um, I, I actually, I have a theory about this, that the, the, um, uh, that a significant amount of pressing actually changes how, how much you're pressing here with your left hand. And it actually causes you to press way, way, way more. When you're pressing way, way more here as well as here in order to get a sound, the, the result of that is that the phrasing usually gets a little bit lumpy. Um, I'm not quite sure why this is yet, uh, but this is just something I've observed with uh, students and, and with uh, also some, you know, some really fine players as well. Um, so, yeah, so it's really, it's more about pulling than it is pressing, and that's something that's really important to understand. Um, to always have that pulling feeling, um, it, it'll make it, it'll make you feel like you can do anything at the cello if you're able to get that feeling um, and, and get that right. Um, you're shifting and I, like I said, left hand aspect, aspects of certain things um, really are, are much easier. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them uh, down below in the comment section on virtualsheetmusic.com, not on YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and also, um, if you have uh, um, already subscribed to my uh, my new blog at uh, cellojunkie.com, uh, then I thank you. And if not, um, please do so. There's actually a little bit more information about uh, uh, the video that I made today um, in a blog uh, that should be up uh, by the time this video goes up. Uh, so anyway, uh, this has been Joseph Bendos for virtualsheetmusic.com.